Hi guys, in this video we'll go through two questions, question 15 and question 16, which are publicly provided on the Victorian Selective Entrance Exam website from the Department of Education. Um, one of the common questions I get is how do we go about these numerical reasoning or verbal reasoning or re sort of reading comprehension questions really quickly um, because essentially you really have 30 seconds within the exam. What this exam or most of the exams do is it's written in a way where by using logical reasoning you can actually get to the answer in say two to three steps okay it's actually done to be quite um quite simple and logical however a lot of things come into play so as for example with looking at this question what you can see here there's actually a lot of information okay um, and sometimes when people do see this information they think oh you know there's so much there to read how am I going to get through it um, the first part to this is having an appropriate strategy and identifying what the question is that you're answering. The reason for this is that you're actually zoning into answering the question with a focus and that has a twofold effect of reducing I guess irrelevant information being read and also being able to zone in on a I guess the correct answer. Okay so let's see what I mean by this. So this with this approach what I generally advise my students to do is to read the question first okay because you only get marks for answering the question regardless of how well you understand the question okay so question 15 says who has the least variety of socks in their collection well you can see even before I've read any information I can see you know Arthur socks Ronald socks Diane socks we've only got um, you know two of the three types in there so it would be Ronald socks um, we also have Mr Sockman here um, and we know that his collection is worth half of the value of Ronald socks plus one white sock and one grey sock and one black sock so de definitely he does not have the least variety you can already see from there that it's Ronald okay so that's you know question 15 should be answered in say one to five seconds okay you can just circle the answer and there you go so even without reading the information there's a strategy there in which you can cut off a lot of time and move to the next question so let's look at now at question 16 um, the easiest way to do this is to first read the question so who would get the most money for their sock collection at auction so the first thing we need to do is to look at an approach to this so the question is asking about the most money so what information would be relevant the first information would be relevant that would be relevant would be the value statement which is this that black socks fetch one quarter of the price of white ones at auction whilst greys fetch half. One of the most important things to do, especially with numerical reasoning, is to put things into, I guess, a formula um, format. So what I would do is black equals one quarter white um, and then you've got grey is half white. What this does is that it makes it clear to you how you're going to evaluate things on I guess a money basis so therefore you know that white would be one full whole. This is the information that is usually missing within numerical reasoning and which is that missing link that you need to find in order to answer the question. Okay, now that we we know that black is one quarter, grey is half and W, the white, equals one, we can now calculate based on the information they've given us. So for example, they've given us the quantities of Arthur socks, of Ronald socks and Diane socks and also this part here. It's interesting to note that this part here, Mr Sockman's sock collection, is half the value of Ronald's sock collection plus one white sock, one grey sock and one black sock is shown not within the table format. Okay, so it's an additional table. Sorry, it's an additional column within the table. How would you then set this up within the exam? Although you're not allowed to write in on the test paper, what you can do is to then write um, or do your workings on you know the back side of another piece of paper. So this is what I would do. I would set it up in a table similar to how they've set it up within the actual test paper. So you've got Arthur, um, Ronald, 
Diane and then the last column would be used for Mr. Sockman sock. Okay, and anything which is a black sock would then be at, um, using the denominator of 4. Anything with a grey would be equal to something over a half and anything which is a white sock would be equal to one full value. Okay, let's see what this means. So looking back here, we've got Arthur socks, three black socks, two white socks, one grey sock and same with the following. So let's, let me do my calculations. We've got three black socks, okay, because obviously each sock is worth a quarter so therefore three socks would be worth three quarters. Same with the white socks, there's two white socks so that's two. Okay, one grey sock would be one over two because one grey sock is worth half of one white sock. What you're doing here is, whilst they haven't shown you the absolute values, so for example, um, you know, one white sock is worth two dollars. What they've shown you instead is the fractional value. So you need to go through this and figure out what is, I guess, which sock would be sold for the most money, even though they haven't given you the monetary value, they've given you a fractional value. Okay, so what you're therefore looking for is the highest fractional value. You could substitute, you could substitute this, so as we've done here, with white just being equal to one dollar, black would be a quarter of a dollar, and G um, being the grey sock being half of a dollar. Okay, so let's keep going forward and what I'll do now is I'll calculate the rest of them, okay, based on the information that we have. Um, okay, so that would be 8 over 4 and that would be 1. Um, Diane would have 4 over 4, 1 and 3 over 2. Mr. Sockman would have one and a half, um, he'd have one, then he'd have a half, and then he'd have a quarter. The reason being he would be half of Ronald's value. Ronald's value is actually eight over four is two holes, so therefore the total value is three. Okay, and therefore half of three is 1.5. Okay, and then you calculate the totals. This one is three and a quarter. We've already got three. Diane would be three and a half. And then Mr. Sockman would also be three and a quarter. Okay, and that's how you would calculate this particular question. You could do that very quickly, especially the table. You'd be able to do, to do the table relatively quickly. Um, the main part in this exam is actually knowing your approach, okay, and that's the most important part because having known what the question is, which is pretty much, which is the highest value, okay, we've got fractional formats here, so this is the key information. We've got key information in the form of this part of the table. What was missing was Mr. Sockman's table and then evaluating them based on this bottom line number here. So therefore, from this table, what you could see is the highest fractional value here would be three and a half. Therefore, the answer to this question here, question 16, would be C, Diane. She would get the most money for her sock collection at auction. Okay, so that concludes just a quick um, overview of how we would approach this question. What we are doing is we're having our um, workshops in, we're having additional workshops in verbal reasoning in next month in May. You can find details of this on www.examsuccess.com.au. In this workshop we'll go through um, you know, various strategies that you can do to maximise your exam score in the upcoming exam and get that competitive edge. Okay, um, it also comes with 50 pages of notes along with a bonus English writing correction. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and we look forward to seeing you at the workshops.